It's like Ray. It seemed like using this character was a way for you to get into that conversation without sort of directly being in that conversation. Because once you kind of get so far in and become too direct, I think people tune it out. But because you have this young man who's going through a change, they can relate to it before they get into that conversation. Is that where this player came from, or was it mostly just about your experience being a, a, a young baseball player? Yeah, I mean, I think it, it, it evolved for sure. I mean, I took. You know, my upbringing, I had two major league tryouts, and that's as far as I got. Who did you uh, try out for? The Mets and the Cincinnati Reds. Um, I got, uh, yeah, those, some tough tryouts. I got hit, got hit around pretty hard. Uh, you got hit I was a pitcher, I was a pitcher. Oh, uh, you got slammed. You got yeah, slammed? I was, yeah, I, was, I wasn't, uh, yeah, the, the gas wasn't happening that day. Just, you know, ah, watching the ball go in the field. So, oh, well, Dad, I think next year uh, I'm gonna have to, <laughs> have to get a couple more miles an hour. In the fact, I was throwing hard, but I was like right over the plate. It was like I wasn't hitting spots or anything. Like I'm gonna go completely tangential <laughs> here for a minute. I'm really sorry, but th I think this is fascinating. Did you expect to become like a professional baseball player when you were in high school? Was that the trajectory that you were planning? Yeah, like I, my, my dad was like Serena Williams' father. Like it was like he was gonna make he was gonna make a professional. So this is I think this is important because we only hear about the Serena Williams. We don't hear about the person who watched the balls get hit over the fence and had to be like, okay, I got to come up with plan B. Yeah, like if I struck out in a game, you know, looking, it was like, I mean, it was like penalties at home. You know, we had to come home and take 200 swings in the living room. Like it, my dad was, was pretty intense. He would watch 162 games a, a year, plus, you know, uh, reruns and postseason play. Like he was in, he was in it to win it. I mean, I, I actually, it was funny because I, I, you know, joking, my father, you know, rest his soul has passed on. But, um, but you know, I was like, you know, if he was a Yankee fan, he might still be alive, you know, because they win all the time, you know. But <laughs> we're like Mets fans, you know, and like that, 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 you know, and uh, diehard Mets fans, literally. Uh, and we just, you know, it takes a toll on the life, you know, it takes a toll when you, when you care so much. No, seriously, when you, when you invest your life in, in a sport, because it, baseball to him was how he communicated. There's a scene in the film where Rob Morgan, who plays his father, yeah. the only way he could communicate with him was telling him situational baseballs. And that's the way my dad would, whether it was, you know, uh, you know, relationships, he would just talk, he would talk and, well, you got to wait for the curveball and hit it to right. Like, dad, you're talking about a girl, you're talking about a, a, a woman in a relationship right now. He's talking about curveballs. You he know. also can't understand any kind of emotional attachment to anything outside of the ambition towards a professional baseball exactly. or a scholarship. Exactly. But what was it like? I am curious. What? When did you come up with the Plan B? And how did you decide that? When did that come? Well, I just. Oh well, the Plan B happened naturally. I, I wasn't good enough, and you know, to make it to the next level. You know, I, I went home the off season. I thought I had a, sh a shot, and I worked out like crazy. I was like, you know, I'm this close. You know, I had two major league tryouts. I'm 19. Next year is the year. I went. You know, I, I put in the extra work, but you know, I. I I got weaker. I didn't actually get stronger. Yeah, I put on muscle mass, but I didn't actually learn to pitch any better. You know, I, I, you know, I didn't have the right coach maybe at the at the time. So uh, plan B was, you know, I, I became a teacher. I taught kindergarten through fifth grade. Then I worked on Wall Street for a few years. And then I've kind of left that to, to become a filmmaker. Um, so I tried lots of different things before before, you know, venturing. I like that so. story more than Serena Williams' story, to be honest. <laughs> I love Serena Williams, but I like I like the plan B stories a lot more.